Okay, now welcome to the seventh day, seventh day of the class for the chapter chemical bonding and molecular structure, which is chapter four. Okay. I have one more class in the afternoon today, and I will continue with this chapter. And, and positively, I will try to complete this chapter by tomorrow. Okay. Then I will do the next chapter from the next classes. Now, uh, in my previous class yesterday, I was talking about, I was talking about this, what you call hybridization. Now, hybridization, what is the meaning of hybridization? What is the meaning of hybridization? Tell me, somebody tell me. Karma Namgyal. Karma Namgyal, tell me what is the meaning of hybridization? Karma Namgyal. Nehal Shankar, Rohan Kapil, what is hybridization? What is the meaning of hybridization? I am asking you the question. Akash Pradhan, what is the meaning of hybridization? Anybody? Hybridization means what? Mixing of? It means mixing of atomic orbitals. It means mixing of atomic orbitals. Hybridization means mixing of atomic orbitals which have comparable energies. The energy difference between the orbitals is not much high. It is comparable so that they can easily mix and can form hybrid orbitals. After that, they can form hybrid orbitals. Now, now, on your screen you can see there is a definition. Hybridization, it is defined as the phenomenon of intermixing of atomic orbitals. There is intermixing of atomic orbitals which are of comparable energies to form a set of same number of new orbitals of equal energy and they are identical in all respect. So this intermixing of orbitals, it happens. It happens. And this intermixing of orbitals happens between orbitals which have similar energy, comparable energy, not much of a difference in the energy level. And after that, they form a set of same number of new orbitals of equal energy and they are identical in all respect. This is called hybridization. Now, to proceed further, to proceed further, I would just would like to give you one example for how hybridization takes place. Okay. So, let's talk about hybridization in methane molecule. When methane molecule is formed, so what is the type of hybridization happening to the central carbon atom? Okay. The formula of methane is CH4. Now, now, we know the central atom in methane is carbon. So, this carbon, so symbol is capital C, it has atomic number how much? What is the atomic number of carbon? Somebody tell me. Six. It is 6. So, the electronic configuration of carbon becomes 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. If you draw the diagram for the orbitals, then it becomes like this. In the ground state, the orbitals are drawn this way. 1s. 2s and then there is 2p. This is 2px, 2py, 2pz. The 1s orbital has two electrons which you can see over here. It has two electrons. The 2s orbitals have another two electrons and the 2p orbitals to the 2p subshell has two electrons. One over here, 
one over here. So, this is the electronic configuration in the ground state. In the ground state. In the ground state. Now, now, now when the electrons of the 2s orbital, when one of the electrons of the 2s orbital it is transferred to the 2pz orbital, then carbon atom becomes excited in the first step. So that time we have 2s orbital with one electron and 2px, y and z with one electron each. One electron each. This is 2px, 2py and 2pz. Now, this orbitals they are of comparable energy so what happens in the next instance they will combine they will mix with each other so the mixing happens this way they mix and then they form a new set of orbitals equal number of orbitals how many one two three and four so each of these orbitals it's now becomes it is now called an sp3 orbital sp3 orbital sp3 orbital sp3 orbital 1s 1s and 3p orbitals they are combining to form sp3 hybrid orbitals hybrid Sir. Orbitals. yes so that 2ps one electron no 2s 2s yeah, 2s is one electron. Then that one electron is transferred. It is transferred to the 2pz orbital. So that's why we get the electronic configuration of the carbon atom in the first excited state. First excited state. Is that clear? Is that clear? So I mean to say the 2s electron, the 2s. Yeah, it is. It has, it has one still electron. There. It is still there. Yes. Only one of them, one of the electron is gone. The second electron. Yes. Now, each of the sp3 hybrid orbitals, they are having one electron each. They are having one electron each. Am I clear? Am I clear? Now, now, if I bring, if I bring four hydrogen atoms, if I bring four hydrogen atoms now, four hydrogen atoms, we know each hydrogen atom has one electron. Each hydrogen atom has one electron. Okay. So this one electron gets accommodated over here. One electron. This one over here. Another one electron. This one over here. Another one electron. This one over here. Another one electron. So that is how. That is how methane molecule is formed. Methane molecule is formed. Carbon in the center. Okay. And then. And then we have the four hydrogens. We have the four hydrogens on the four vertices <coughs> of this tetrahedron. Of this tetrahedron. So these are this is sp3, this is sp3, sp3, this is sp3. So the hydrogens are using their s orbital okay but the carbon is using what sp3 this is all sp3 sp3 hybrid orbitals sp3 hybrid orbitals are you getting it are you understanding now so which one so that Two has got mixed with two p, two x, and two y, no, and two z, no. Yeah, yeah. Then where is that? So one s orbital. No, no. This this one s electrons, this one s is inner orbital, inner subshell, no, inner shell. This is the valence shell. This is the valence shell, no. We have to use only the valence yes, electrons, no. Yes, whenever yes, whenever we form covalent bonding. We use only the valence shell electrons. Am I clear now? 
Am I clear? Yes, sir. Now it is clear. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is how, this is how atoms of elements which are acting as a central atom, they use their valence shell electrons and they undergo hybridization, mixing of atomic orbitals to form hybrid orbitals after which they share electrons they share electrons in their orbitals accommodate electrons over there and they form bonding covalent bonds okay so the central atom central carbon atom in methane molecule is sp3 hybridized am i clear now am i clear okay now now let us go to the next slide let us go to the next slide little bit of rules slowly we learn the rules slowly rules regarding hybridization very very slowly okay if you look at the first one over here only orbitals of approximately same energy levels can participate same or similar energy levels if the energy level difference is vast it becomes difficult for hybridization to occur Number of orbitals mixed is equal to number of hybrid orbitals produced. You saw 1s and p3. 1s and if you use 3p, it is, it is coming to 4. So here also you will get sp3. How many, are, how many of them? 4 of them. Next one. Most hybrid orbitals are similar but are, non -less, no, but are but not always identical in shape. Hybrid orbitals are similar, but they are not identical in shape. They may differ from one another in their orientation in space, how they are placed in space. That is the important thing. The electron waves in hybrid orbitals repel each other, and this tend to the and this tend to the farthest apart to attain maximum stability. The hybrid orbitals can form only sigma bonds. This is one important point. They can form only sigma bonds. Sigma bonds. Hybrid orbitals can form only sigma bonds. That is because of head-on overlap. Because of head-on overlap. The next one. Depending on the number and the nature of orbitals undergoing hybridization, various types of hybrid orbitals directing towards the corners of specific geometrical figures come into existence. Okay, so this is what happens whenever hybridization occurs, the combining atoms which are com connecting to the central metal atom, they occupy positions at the corners of a specified geometrical figure. It may be trigonal, it may be tetrahedral, it may be trigonal planar, it may be trigonal bipyramidal and so on. Okay, now let us have a look to what I explained that time. Over here, this is what I have already explained. Now, this is done in a simple manner over here. Definition, you know, mixing of native orbitals on a given atom to form specific atomic orbitals for bonding. The carbon atom in the ground state, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. In the excited state, 1s2, 2sp. This one, one, one. So, these are mixing. These are mixing to form sp3 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 4 sp3 hybridized, hybridized orbitals okay so that is how hybridization generally occurs now let us look at the salient features of hybridization look at the first one look at the first feature the number of hybrid orbitals it is equal to the number of atomic orbitals which we are using that get hybridized. The second one, the hybrid orbitals are always equivalent in energy and shape. The third one, the hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming stable bonds than the pure atomic orbitals. Pure atomic orbitals may not be stable, but once hybridization has occurred, they form more stable bonds. Stable bonds means the molecule or the compound which is forming, that is also stable. These hybrid 
orbitals are directed in space in some preferred direction to have minimum repulsion that is maximum stability between electron pairs and thus a stable arrangement is achieved so these are some salient features okay you should be read then moving to the next slide coming to types of hybridization these are the different types of hybridization and this chart is important for you this chart which you see on the screen it is important for you all to remember as much as possible okay with regard to the examples the first type of hybridization is sp 1s and 1p number of hybrid groups form this two bond angle is 180 it is a linear shape examples are here bcl2 co2 okay c2h2 hgcl2 cyanide and nitride okay the next type of hybridization is sp2 1s and 2p number of hybrid orbitals form this three of them okay this is 1s over here 1s plus 2p this is 1s plus 1p okay then over here the bond angle in sp2 hybridization is 120 degrees it has a plane trigonal plane trigonal trigonal planar we'll say trigonal planar trigonal planar means this way this way central atom in the center okay trigonal planar example sulfur trioxide boron trifluoride aluminum chloride even carbonate ion okay then the next one is sp3 type of hybridization where 1s mixes with 3p and the number of hybrid orbitals formed is 3 plus 1 is 4 so 4 over here regular bond angle if there are no lone pairs 109 degrees 28 minutes the shape structure is tetrahedral examples are so many are there methane carbon tetrachloride ethane sulfate clo4 minus 1 nickel tetracarbonyl okay all these are examples of sp3 type of hybridization next one is sp3 sp2d sp2d 1s or better we call it s uh, what do you call it? d sp2 this is actually not possible but what is possible is d sp2 first d then sp2 that means 1d plus 1s plus 2p then only you get d sp2 inner orbital complex the number of orbitals formed is 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 1 4 so four are hybrid orbitals bond angle is uh, 90 degrees okay the structure is uh, square planar nickel tetracyano uh, what is called nicn4 nicn4 minus 2 and pdcn4 minus 2 these are two examples square planar square planar means like this shape square planar okay nickel is in the center surrounded by four cyanide radicals next one is sp3d sp3d where there is mixing of 1s 3p and 1p so here 3 4 5 5 orbitals are obtained hybrid orbitals there are two types of bond angles one is 90 degrees another one is 120 degrees you have seen i have seen in the i've shown you in the previous classes how does a trigonal bipyramidal shape looks like okay trigonal bipyramidal shape looks like examples are pcl5 pf5 and pcl5 trigonal bipyramidal shape trigonal bipyramidal shape one up one down to you this way cl cl phosphorus then these are in the same plane this way okay then the next one is sp2 sp3 this is sp3 sorry 3 4 5 6 6 this is sp3 d2 over here 1s plus 3 1s plus uh 3p 1s plus just a second i'm over here in this one is 1s plus uh 3p plus 2d orbitals are mixing resulting in six hybrid orbitals and the angles the bond angle everywhere is 90 degrees the shape is octahedral sulfur hexafluoride or fecn6 
potassium ferrocyanide from potassium ferrocyanide. Okay, these are two different things. Okay, then the last one over here hybrid hybridization is sp sp3 sp3 uh, sp3 d3 sp3 uh, this is d2 this is d3 okay so here 1 s 3 p and 3 d they will intermix to form number of hybrid is 7 bond angles are 90 and 72 the shape becomes you know uh, it is pentagonal bipyramid example is if7 so these are the different types of hybridization which we will learn now in detail one by one okay now have a look at the next slide on your screen uh, there are two tables one is a diagrammatic illustration the second one another one is the first one is uh, it's also a table showing the geometric arrangement characteristic of bond uh, hybrid orbital sets okay now the first one we already saw linear shape the second one is trigonal planar Third one is tetrahedral, fourth one is trigonal, bipyramidal, and the next one is octahedral. Okay, so these are the shapes, examples already given over here. Now, electron density 2, 1 here, 1 here. Electron density 3, 3, okay, 3. 1 is in the center, 3 this way, it becomes, you can see over here. Electron density is 4, 1 is here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay, sp3. Electron density is 5. This is how a trigonal bipyramidal shape looks like. <coughs> SP3D. Then we have electron density 6. Okay, that is octahedral. And after that, we can have electron density higher also. 7 also. That in the case of IF7, SP3 to 3 hybridization. Okay, so you can see the bond angles 90, 120, 90, 90. Okay, if you go higher, it will be 90, 90 and 72, 109 degrees, 28 degrees. 120 degrees, 180 degrees for linear shape. Okay, now moving to the next slide um, to understand further in this chapter with regard to hybridization. The first one, the first type of hybridization, this is something which I explained you already. So I am repeating it once more. The carbon atom in the ground state. This is formation of methane molecule where methane has a tetrahedral shape. This shape is called tetrahedral. In the ground state, this is 1s, 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz. Okay, these are the subshells of the orbitals. In the first excited state, this electron is transferred over here. Okay, so we get this atomic orbitals. Now they will combine, they will mix to form sp3, sp3 hybrid orbitals. After that, this four orbitals will accommodate one electron each from the four hydrogen atoms to form bonds, covalent bonds. So that is how you can see sp3, 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 sp3. And this hydrogen they are using their 1s orbital. <coughs> the hydrogens are using their 1s orbital to form a bond with the sp3 hybrid orbitals. That is how uh, the structure of methane molecule looks like. Okay, now look at the next example on your screen. For sp2 hybridization, which has a trigonal, which has a trigonal planar shape. Trigonal planar shape. Here, in sp2 hybridization, one s orbital and two p orbitals of the same atom mix to form three identical hybrid orbitals lying on a plane with an angle of 120 degrees between them. Okay. So now here, so now here, 1s orbital plus 2p orbital. This is px. This is py. 1x and 2p orbitals they are combining to give rise to sp2 hybrid orbital. This is the shape of here, shape of sp2 hybrid orbital. So this is how they are aligned, making an angle of 120 degrees over here. Okay, okay, it's here. Okay, so that is example of sp2 hybridization. Now, moving to the next slide over here. Sir. Yes. Sir, in the previous slide, sir, why is that other product also formed? Which is this one? This yes, one? sir. No, this is, this is, you know, the s orbital, which is the inner one, inside one, no? 
the yes, orbiter sir. in the inside one that is the orbiter which is not clear, you know only s and the px and py they are you know they are px and py they are mixing you know? the inner ones are not mixing but it is shown over there after yes, hybridization this is what it looks like the orbiter okay is that clear yes sir is that clear okay now now looking at the next slide moving to the next slide uh, the same thing we can explain in the diagram over here electronic configuration of carbon in the ground state below you know, electronic configuration of carbon in the excited state in the case of formation of you know ethene ethene c2 c2h4 c2h4 sigma bond this one is a pi bond <coughs> so in the first excited state this electron is transferred over here but after the transfer only one s and two p orbitals they mix they mix see over here that is very important they mix the the last one it is unhybridized unhybridized it is not undergoing hybridization so we have three sp2 hybrid orbitals containing three electrons one electron each in them so in these three three electrons over here see the carbon no this carbon this carbon over here one hydrogen over here another hydrogen and over here with this carbon so this is sp2 this is also sp2 this is also sp2 and this remains unhybridized which is used to form a pi bond with the other carbon okay that will this is head on overlap this is head on overlap okay this is also head on overlap but uh hydrogen has s orbital it's a spherical in shape so here this is sp2 this is also sp2 this is also sp2 so there are three sp2 hybridized orbitals and that extra electron which is there in the unhybridized pz orbital that overlaps sideways that overlaps sideways you know this is pz this there is also pz over here okay pz orbital they will overlap sideways to form a to form a pi bond Am I clear? So that is how an sp2 hybridization, which has a trigonal planar shape, looks like. Okay. Now, now look at the next slide. You can see the same thing. It has been explained. Okay, in a much better manner. Sp2 head on overlap. Sp2 sp2, and the unhybridized orbital, that is pz orbital, it is overlapping sideways to form a pi bond over here. Here it is sp2. Here it is sp2. Okay, here it is sp2, here it is <coughs> sp2. Okay, so the bond angle you must remember. I am talking about this bond angle, this bond angle, this bond angle. It is all 120 degrees. Okay, I think that is clear. Okay, now, now have a look at the next uh, slide on your screen. Okay, and now look at it. Try to understand what you can understand from the screen, and I'll join you. In one minute. You can see over there for sp hybridization on a screen in the ground state carbon atom same thing 1s2 2s2 2p2 in the first excited state see this electron has been transferred over here now in the hybridized state only only the s 1s and 1p is undergoing mixing hybridization these two electrons are not used they are unhybridized p orbitals that means Py and Pz, 
orbitals are unhybridized. So this is the case of ethane molecule, ethane, carbon-carbon triple bond. So here, let's take each example. So after sp hybridization, this is sp with hydrogen, sp head-on, here also sp head-on, okay. And these two electrons, one is py, one is py, okay. This is py and this one is pz. This is py, this one is pz. So they overlap, they overlap sideways, they overlap sideways. This is P, uh, pz, this is py, okay. So they overlap py, py, pz, pz. They overlap to form one pi bond up, one pi bond down, okay. So that is how sp hybridization takes place and results in the formation of sigma and pi bonds. Now, <clears throat> look at the next slide on your screen. You can, you'll understand much better over here, which has a linear shape, okay. See, this is sigma bond. SP, SP, head on overlap. And over here, PP overlap. PP overlap. This is PP overlap. If it is Y orbital, which is overlapping here to form one pi bond. And another one over here overlapping to form another pi bond. So there are two pi bonds formed. So that's how in a uh, ethane molecule, the central one is a sigma bond. Up there is a pi bond. Down there is a pi bond. And the bond angle is 180 degrees. Okay. So that is sp hybridization now moving further <clears throat> to the next type of hybridization which is called dsp2 hybridization which has a square planar geometry which has a square planar geometry example is copper tetramine complex ion now copper its atomic number is 29 so it has nine electrons in its 3d Subshell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But this one electron has been transferred over here to increase stability. So it has 10 electrons here and one electron in the S orbital. Now, what happens? This electron in the 4S orbital it is transferred to the 4PZ orbital. Okay. And this empty orbitals, 4, this empty orbitals, 1D, 1S, and 2P, they, they mix they mix to form four dsp2 hybrid orbitals so the such complexes they give rise to inner orbital inner orbital complex inner orbital complexes where why it is called inner orbital because the inner d orbital is used to undergo hybridization so these four orbitals are now occupied by ligands the ligands can be sulfate, anything, it can be anything, chloride, okay. So, four ligands use their, both the electron pairs, both the electron pairs to form bonds in this four DSP2 hybrid orbitals, okay. So, we can have, you know, copper tetramine sulfate, NS34SO4. So, we can use this four sulfate electrons over here to form this uh, complex. Now, this was an example of DSP2 hybridization. If you look at the next slide over here, the same thing, DSP2 hybridization. Another example, the geometry is square planar. Tetracyanonicolate ion, orbitals of nickel, 3D orbitals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4S is empty, 4P is empty. So, over here, what happens? This electron, this electron, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this electron is sent inside. Okay, and this empty it combines with 1D over here, 1S and 2P, and 1P is unhabitized, so it becomes DSP2 habit orbitals over here. Okay, then what happens? We get four pairs of electrons from four cyanide groups to form this ion, tetracyanonicolate ion. Okay, so this is an example of DSP2 hybridization which has a square planar geometry. This geometry is called square planar geometry all angles all angles will be over here 90 degrees okay now moving to the next slide you can see on your screen there is the next type of hybridization which is called sp3 hybridization the shape of sp3 hybridization is trigonal bipyramidal geometry it has a trigonal bipyramidal geometry 
here example of a compound showing trigonal bipyramidal geometry is phosphorus pentachloride phosphorus atom 15 atomic number is 15 so there are 15 electrons all together with five electrons in the valence shell so one two three four five three s orbital two electrons and three p three electrons that is making five in the excited state this electron from the 3s orbital is transferred it is transferred straight away to the 3d first orbital okay so we have one 3s1 and 3p3 of them and 3d1 so this orbitals will now intermix they will intermix with each other to form sp3 hybridized orbitals where the electrons from five fluorine atoms will accommodate get accommodated over here in these five orbitals to give it a shape like this to give it a shape like this which is called trigonal bipyramidal shape so sp3 hybrid orbitals filled by electron pairs donated by five fluorine atoms so fluorine atoms we know they have one two three four five six and seven and this seventh electron is this electron i'm talking about okay so this is the diagram you can see it looks like Trigonal, bipyramidal. Trigonal is here and pyramidal is here in this shape. Okay, so this is the shape. All, all the central phosphorus atom with the five chlorine atoms, the shape of the hybridization is sp3d. Okay, now if you look at the next slide on your screen, that is an example of sp3d2 hybridization, which has an octahedral geometry. Example is IF uh, SF6. You can talk about sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride. This fluorine, this fluorine, this is fluorine, this is fluorine, and this fluorine and this fluorine on the plane of the paper along with the sulfur. Okay. This is down, this is down, this is towards you. Okay. <coughs> so there are no lone pairs over here. And this is how an octahedral shape looks like. This, this, and this is up to down. Okay. So that is the shape over here, octahedral geometry. Let us make this clear from the next diagram on your screen. Okay, that is the octahedral geometry. Let's look at SF6 sulfur atom in the ground state. In the six electrons in the valence shell, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that is there. So in the excited state, what happens? This electron is transferred here. This electron is transferred here. So we are getting all together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 6 orbitals half filled this way. Now, these will intermix with each other and give rise to S, S, P3, and D2 hybrid orbitals over here, where 5 fluorine atoms donate or give total, uh, 6 fluorine atoms give total 6 electrons to form SF6, sulfur hexafluoride. Okay. So that is how we get octahedral geometry. Okay. Now, look at the next type of hybridization that is called sp3d3 hybridization, which has a pentagonal bipyramidal geometry. In the case of IF7, iodine heptafluoride, iodine heptafluoride, iodine in the ground state, seven electrons in valence shell. In the excited state, these electrons are transferred to the 5D orbital this way, this way this way you know so we get in the excited state one two three four five six seven s this is p3 p3 this one it is d3 okay so s p3 d3 hybrid hybridization uh, what do you call hybridization so the seven fluorine atoms use one electron each from the valence shell to form a bond with the central iodine which results in the formation of sp3 d3 hybridization so that is the shape this is the shape this fluorine, this fluorine, this fluorine, this fluorine, this fluorine on the same plane, but this is above towards you. This is away from you against the plane of this paper. Okay, so that is the pentagonal bipyramidal geometry of IF7 molecule explained on the same slide for you. Okay, now, now these were the different types of hydrogen, and I request all of you to go through these slides very, very carefully. The illustration for the shape of iodine heptafluoride is on your screen. There are two types of bond angles over here. One is 90, and this is 72, 72. This is 72, this is 72. But this one, this one is 90. This one is 90. Okay, so that is how the shape of an sp3d3 hybrid 
hybridized orbital looks like as in a pentagonal by pyramidal geometry okay now now i would like to stop my class here only because you have got another class after this so it's already time up but just hang on over there because i need to record your attendance okay can you see the screen yes sir okay so i am downloading the attendance list okay it is it is downloading it has been download downloaded now okay now you may leave the class thank you so much we'll meet in the afternoon okay thank you day. sir thank you sir yeah